Hey everybody, Alvinator here from Mulligans and Hackers Golf, and today on the podcast, happy Canada Day, by the way, because this podcast will be coming out on Canada Day. We have Clay Cryer from One Stab Golf, club fitter, builder, and works at a golf course, and we'll talk about that later. Um, how you doing, pal? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on, man. Hey, man, I appreciate your time. It's it's uh, it's great to chat with you because you're just probably three hours up the road from us here in uh to up towards Calgary and um, mm. you know uh, it's a local podcast this time and it's pretty cool yeah yeah for sure like so um I'm a father of five and I'm, I I come from musket cheese I'm full nation full full first nation Cree um got into like the club building side just over the winter like I was thinking about getting into uh one of the big 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 brand name uh stores right so i was like thinking about going that route uh so i just went about it solo so this is where i'm at right now um just building out of my out of the basement small setup it's basic but it, it has everything that a guy needs to build what what's yeah, out there, i mean right? doing what you're doing there in that type of setup clay uh people appreciate the pers the, the personalization that you can do um mm -hmm outside of we'll say the big box stores um you know, yeah yeah you can you you're you can get personal with your with your uh fitter you know and yeah. so you know i i will get we'll get into um how you got into all this in, in a little bit here but um, i was going to ask you like when you're fitting someone someone comes to you and says clay like let's let's work together here and, and let's get my 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 um uh, my setup the way i want it yeah are you in are you a numbers guy or are you a let's look at what you're doing type guy it, it I just go off of like the person, right? So it, you can tell when so, when somebody's into the numbers or the like the whole nerd part of the golf thing, or if they're just all on feel. I mean, I'm not gonna bore anybody with like the whole numbers and tell them, oh, this is where you're at, this is where you should be at. Like that just gets crazy, and then you're out on a golf course and you you can't see that on a course, so it doesn't really matter uh, to a point. So like I just try work with whoever comes up. Um, it's just like. If they're all about feel, like let's just go off of that. If they're about the numbers, let's go off of the numbers. So, so I'm not so going to force. Do you do do you do like swing sessions in in your basement, or do you just go out and play around with a guy? Like let's go do eighteen. Let me let me see what you're doing with type of stuff. Oh, so like like if they want to see their numbers, like I, I it's either we go to the Sims or else like I just uh, have a swing monitor that I set up wherever I could bring come bring it out to their place, right? And then you just get a few basic numbers. Uh, so if they're looking into wedges, uh, irons, or a shaft for the driver, so it all it all just depends on what they're getting into. Um, most people that come up, it's just like I'm not gonna force a whole bag, a full bag fitting. Like I'm just like, what's your favorite club? Let's work on that. I'm not gonna uh, price gouge on anything, right? So if you have um, <clears throat> if you have a set of irons that your favorite favorite clubs like let's work on those we don't have to put you into a brand new set of anything right uh yeah, if you have you know, people might be comfortable with the with the clubs that they have and they just need what they have tweaked maybe oh yeah a little bit to how again their swing and how they're set up right so yeah everybody's swing is different so like for wedges um i'm, I'm big on like the gap in the wedges uh because like most most sets have um jacked up lofts so when you get into the wedges a lot of guys go into the 52 56 setup right and that's just like you have such a big gap from your 56 to your pitching wedge if you don't have a gap wedge in there right and a lot of a lot of guys are like oh i could hit my pitching wedge uh just as far or just as less and they're like are you sure it's just like <clears throat> it's a it, it's a big ego thing too right um tv golf a lot of guys get encouraged by that watching that and they're like their favorite players plays this setup little so, do they know so that's one little, thing like like a guy like two guys playing golf could both be could both have we'll say seven irons but the loft on those seven irons are different oh for sure right. uh there's, there's the retro loft the retro loft is basically blades a lot of blades have retro lofts so like when they're when you look at a pitching wedge um it goes to like a 45, 46. Uh, most 
game improvement arms, their their pitching wedges are like 40, 47, 48. So it's like when you look at the different setups of uh, clubs, if they're a player's brand or if it's like a, a game improvement, which most clubs are game improvement, right? It's like their their lofts are jacked up. So like most guys that are not golf nerds, they don't think about that part. And then they're like, <clears throat> they're wondering why their shots are coming up short with a certain wedge or whatever. And they're like, you got a big gap in there. Just like, yeah. let's, let's, let's fill that in. You could either, you could either bend your wedges to, to, to squeeze your gap together. Or if you have like, you know, a different wedge, you want it to go weaker, stronger. So there's different ways. I mean, you don't have to go out and buy a brand new wedge setup. Just bend your wedges to what you want. I mean, you well affect the balance a little bit, but most wedges out there are high balance. So like if you're bending it just a couple of degrees, you're not going to, you're not going to affect the balance super yeah. much. Again, there's so much into that, that, you know, we could talk about this for, for days oh, yeah. and not, and that, not cover that, everything. You know what I mean? That, like the, that's the, the golf, the golf nerd stuff and the golf geek stuff is just like, and again, being relatively new into the game, like there's so much of that that can come at you at one time. It's like, okay, just take a step back and, you know, like, what do you want to work on first? Because I know, uh, like, Chris has his uh, fitting done and he has his Mizunos. The next step for me is I got to get a fitting done and I got to start working on, you know, and again, I'm not going to do a whole bag or anything, but I got to start somewhere and get a fit somewhere and probably in my irons and stuff and then work out from that over over time, right? Mm-hmm. And that'll so come. many options. Yeah, so, so many, many options, options, right? Yeah, and and trying to figure out what works for me is is that process, right? And we'll we'll see how that plays out in the next little while. Um, mm. So, Clay, how did you get into? I guess how did you get into golf? Because you play golf. Um, I wouldn't say I won't say professionally, but amateurly, you play yep. golf, right? Mm. And you're in the club fitting. Um, Let's go back and give us a little bit of uh, of from where you came from. How did you get into golf, and how did you get to the point where now you're you're building it, and this is something that you you know you took a little business and you're starting to grow it, and you've got some players involved with you, and uh, just go back and tell us how this all started for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> so, like, I where I come from, I grew up on Muskogee. Uh, it used to be called Hobima, so that's about two hours north of us. It, it, it's a small reserve. There's like little towns in between. Um, that's where we mainly golf. Like if you're not born into golf, like it's, or if you don't have no one to teach you golf, which I didn't have my father around. So it was like basically everything was self-taught. Um, I used to golf in the back of a old elder's home. They always cut their lawn. So that's where I'd be swinging my wedges or whatever club I had. So that's where I kind of built my swing was in the backside of a elder's home. Um, that's how I got into golf and then my buddy at the time he went out golfing and I joined him and it was the first time being on the golf course like it was called Montgomery Glen like being from the reserve and then seeing like a, a course that green that much space I didn't I was amazed I was hooked for, from day one and then unfortunately I had to take a break when I was um in my early uh 20s because of an injury so i had to take a break for about five four years so i didn't i didn't think i was going to be able to golf after that uh, and then i got into competitive golf i wouldn't say with the handicap system because we didn't use handicaps over there uh it's just basically like what you shot so i, I didn't know what a handicap was until i moved into calgary here because like getting into the the more um, organized events here where, where they run off the handicap system. It's like, that was a whole new thing to me. So um, when you got into golf play, like when you were younger and got into golf and then say you got back into golf after your injury, um, like how much time did you spend practicing, playing to get to a point where, you know, you could play competitive golf? Like how much, how much time did you play or spend learning the game we'll say to get you to like a different level how 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 much time do you spend doing it uh <clears throat> as much as i can honestly like i like i said being where i lived like just going outside to swing the club like just in the evenings like it was i didn't have to pay so like i was just out there swinging i honestly 
it's hard to like say how I got into it fully and then how I got into competitive golf is basically just playing with buddies that were a lot better than me. Like I, I still remember the first time I shot in the seventies, like I was playing with three, a group of three guys that were always shooting like the lights out, beating, beating the shit out of me on a golf course. basically. So I learned then um, that I could shoot as good as them. And that's where I was like, okay. So I started entering tournaments. Um, and then after that, like I said, when I moved to Calgary, uh, after I learned the handicap system, um, that's where I kind of took on the competitive golf side where I was learning how to enter tournaments on my own, learning <clears throat> basically how to play by the handicap system. It's like you, you count everything, right? Which is the way a golf a golf score is supposed to be. It's, it's, it's really hard to say how I got into the competitive side. It's, 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 it's basically if you don't go out looking for the tournaments, uh, if you don't have the, the courage to jump into a tournament, right? Because it could, it does cost money. Golf's expensive. It's um just something. It's a passion, right? I fell in love with golf. It's just something I don't think I'll ever ever give up. So, do you still play like competitive golf now? Yeah, yeah, for sure. As much as I can, like, like. If if I if there's a tour tournament local or if there's a qualifier local, uh, depends on the game too, right? If your game's not there, like I'm not gonna go and try force it. So this season, my 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 golf game's actually there. It's I'm swinging decent, scoring decent. So I started getting into a few more of the qualifiers this season. Um, I made it into the mid amateur this this. June twelfth, I think it was, which was out at Serenity where I work. So I work out on a turf crew there, right? So that was kind of that was another thing in itself, right? I had to ask for permission for a day off, and then my boss was like, "Well, we're setting up the course for this and that," and I was like, "Well, I'm gonna try playing it." He's like, "What?" So <laughs> yeah, so that was awesome. Um, I mean, like that was for myself. It was like because, like, I think out of all of us on the golf like golf turf there uh the turf crew none of them as far as i know none of them play in competitive tournaments so they don't know that grind right um and then i tried to explain to them how <clears throat> how tough the course was playing that day like uh everybody that works there they put in hard work to take to, to get the course set up to that it was it was tough that day like the wind was on full blast all day uh I was playing three clubs, three clubs up from what I normally shoot. Like I was shooting a five iron from 150, like about four times, like to swing that and just be like, to trust your swing going into like 150 out. It's just like, I'm going to swing this and it could possibly just airmail the green. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I said, getting into competitive golf, like it's just, it was a passion where I was just like a lot of guys don't have that where they like go out looking for that because they get discouraged or they like, I, it, I don't it, have the it's game. a different animal pal. I'll tell you. And I mean, again, still being relatively new in the game, we played our first couple of Alberta golf tour events here. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, like it's a total different mind frame when you're like, you have to be on for every shot. Cause again, you don't want to fucking embarrass yourself. Right. You're going to go yeah. play in a, you're going to go to play in a tournament and you know, all the shots are counted. Um, you don't want to look like, well, what the hell are you doing here? Right. Uh, <laughs> no. and, 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 right. And, and so the first tournament I played and I actually played really well and, and finished second in the sea flight. And <clears throat> that, I don't think, um, no matter no matter what I do now, like in tournaments down the road, I can always go back to that marker and go, dude, you placed really well in your first tournament. Just get back to where your mindset was there, right? But I'll tell you, it took a lot out of me that day because the, the round I played the next day, uh, I picked the ball up and put it in my pocket a lot that day. That's for sure. <laughs> no, it happens that way, man. Like like competitive golf and you have to count everything. A lot of people say golf's so easy, but when you're in the, in the, you're in the grind of uh, – counting everything it's just like for me like i get tight up here and my shoulders get super tight because i'm probably i don't know what it is it's just like you you use a lot of muscles in, inside your body that you don't even know you're using 
throughout the round, right? Yeah, but you're trying to be on for every shot, and it's like, you know, like, where's my where's my takeaway point? What marker do I have to hit in the backswing? Like, where do I want to finish? And it's like, yeah, you're focused. You're so hyper-focused on what you're doing, right, in tournament play. Yep. Especially when there's, you know, if, if you're playing for money and there's, you know, money on the line and you want to, you want to go home, come home with some cash, like every shot counts, man, right? Now, I can't, <laughs> yeah, I, can't yeah. I, I, I still find it difficult to fathom how pro or how amateurs and, and, and pros spend four straight days doing this and, and being on for those four days, like mentally and physically, these, these guys are athletes, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, dude. Like one, like just holding it together for one round. I'm, I'm like beat after that round. Even like two rounds where I play in competitive golf, where it, if it's two or three rounds, I can't imagine doing that for four rounds straight. Let alone, you, you see these guys on TV, um, coming into like the first, like final holes, right? You're like, if you're ever in that any type of situation like that, like that's a privilege to hold that type of pressure. Like it's, I watch them and I'm like, man, this guy or whoever it is, it's just like, it's amazing to see. And then you just like, you see, them. sometimes you see them break down and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's there. Like it could happen. Like you bet, you bet. I've seen some, seen some pretty, you know, wild scores every now and then on, on certain holes, especially for, even from the pros, right? Like, and again, you see that, and usually the next hole, their partner or, or birdie in it, because they, again, they go, mm. they forget that, and they just move back into their tournament style play. And that's for us, you know, for me personally as an amateur, that's tough for me to do. It's like if you had a bad hole, well, the round's over. Well, you only got like thirteen more holes to go, pal. Like you can bring it back, right? <laughs> so, yeah. But, but anyways, so you got into some competitive golf. Um, mm. So where did the 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 one stab? Uh, that's because that is your that is your fitting and and building business, right? One stab. Yes, uh, it's called so, One Stab Golf. So yeah, give us a little bit about how and and I guess where One Stab came from and 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 how you got into learning the skills of of building and, and fitting people. Well, for um, the fit inside, that's that's fairly new. But like the build inside, like I've I've built clubs, um, just self taught. And then taught from my uncle from up north. Uh, the clubs that I currently use right now, like I have, I think uh, one or two clubs that I didn't build. Um, I had another guy build. Uh, that's when I just didn't have all my tools set together, right? So after, after that, um, basically, the fit inside came in uh, just over the winter, this past season. I was thinking about like getting into the big big box stores uh just to go that route but then i was thinking about going my own route i was looking at all these different companies in the states here in canada um and then i was thinking about like how i could go about it i was thinking if i should start um my own business which i ended up doing all by myself it's 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 not easy i'll tell you that much the one stab golf um it it just came out of nowhere. One stab was um it came from a movie that 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 names from uh, Legends of the Falls. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I got that, and then it's just it's 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 just something where I was just like I, I name wise I couldn't pick out like I was looking at all these different names. I was like I don't want to go that route. I don't want to have that. Uh, then the logo thing. Um, when you see the logo, a lot of people are like, "Well, where do you come up with that?" I was like, "I can't draw a shit." um doesn't matter if it's a stick man or whatever uh so like the logo was drawn from my daughter she used to draw that in the back of my window on the dirt a few times i would see it here and there and i didn't know what the hell it was i was like is that a like to me it looks like a golf flag and she's like oh it's a mouse i was like what <laughs> so so yeah that's where the logo came from like my my daughter drew it and i ended up just kind of taking it over from her um she's a wicked artist so a lot of the stuff that I need drawn, like I always go back to her. Um, the golf fitting thing, uh, I got into it, like I said, over the winter. I started looking into uh, all the certification, like certificates you need going into it. Like, so I reached out to a lot of different companies. They sent me back the information on how to get like certified from their companies and all that. So I got 
um, <clears throat> most major golf grip companies that have courses. I got those. Uh, golf Pride um, is is a big one because like they they like to have everything advertised. So once you finish their course, they send you a, like a big sign has your name on on it and all that. I don't have it here. I have it at my other place. Um, and then like. Callaway. Callaway offers a lot of certifications. Like you could go into the fit inside for them. So I got into a fit and spe specialist, uh, a club specialist. So I got certificates from Callaway doing that. Um, KBS, True Temper. Um, there's a whole, like I got, I'd say like 12 or so. So like if someone wants to know, like I actually have a background in the golf side like i could show them that but it's just like if, if somebody comes to me with like they want a certain shaft like i'll fit them into anything they want it's just like we just have to make sure that their swing is built for that right so a lot of ego comes into like um when someone wants to say if they want a, an extra stiff shaft it's like are you able to swing that like say 16 holes in are you is your swing gonna hold that right yeah. It doesn't, it, it, so I, I often offer if I fit somebody into something, I'll, I'll play with them. I'll, I'll go out and play around with them so I could actually see the club in action, right? Like if they, if they want to know if anything that I build is working, like I'd like to have a look at my clubs. Like my clubs are basically there to, to show like the product that I'm pushing out is actually work, working and playing, right? Um, and having the certificates, yeah. having the certificates from some of the bigger brands too, must give you a, a little bit of validation and say, hey, you know, if these guys have faith in me to to you know, push their products, you know, you should have faith in me that I actually can do the work for you and and make it work for you too, right? Yep, yep, yep. And and like um, most big brand stores, they they want you to have those certifications when you come in to work for them. So like if you roll into there and you have all this stuff to show them like they'll hire you most most times than not uh, like i said that the club fit inside it was like uh it was really really kind of on a spur of a moment when i was looking into like where i could go with how with how the industry is it, it's super if you're if you don't have if you don't have like a store set up a lot of companies won't really um give you the time basically right so i i had to um i had to explain my way into a lot of companies uh how i was gonna fit people how i was gonna bring their product out right so <clears throat> having certification certifications from all these companies it does help right a lot of people come in and they don't know like you have a certificate from certain said, said brand right so getting into that side i was like um doing it all i'm still doing it all on my own um it, it's the funding part it it's not not easy like i'm not gonna have a, a big stockpile like the big brand stores will have like so if somebody comes up like i'll i'll, I'll work with them i'll tell them like yo well, I, I could bring this in but it's gonna be you know, shipping i don't have it on stock but but i'll go back to clay like you know the big box stores are what they are but what you offer is the personaliz personalization of building your set. You have a, when somebody comes to you, and we'll talk about some of the people that have come to you uh, here in a sec, but mm -hmm. when they come to you, like you have a vested interest in their bag working for them, right? So, yeah. so that personalization, like when you go to one of the bigger box store places, it's like, you, you know, you get in, you, and I'm not saying that they're, that they're, you know, not going to look after you, but, like when you go through your your and you cycle out and you got your shit and you're off to the golf course, well, then your your relationship is pretty much ended right there. But with a guy like you, because see, this is the thing: we have a builder here, and he and again, he's got a setup in his garage. Mm -hmm. Right, and he's been here for decades doing the exact same thing out of his garage, and that's yeah. how Chris got fitted with this guy because he sells Mizuno and I think PXG and maybe one other one. And um, again, he does all my grips here in town. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that personalization. I know the guy and I know when I take my stuff to him or Chris has anything that he needs to go deal with. Um, we know the guy's name. 
He's like, yeah, I'll take care of your stuff, guys. Come back tomorrow. I'll have it ready for you, right? Yeah. That personalization, that's what you offer outside of the big box store. And, and some people who are getting into golf and maybe maybe not taking golf as seriously but still want to get that fitting because it is important, or people that are serious, now they can build that relationship with you because it's personal. Yeah. Yeah. So like, like exactly that. Like, so once, once you leave the big, big brand stores and then you're out on a course and say something's not working, like say you bought like a shaft uh, and it's not working. Like for myself, if someone comes to me and they're going to spend X amount of money, um, I'll always make a deal with them. Like if that shaft's not working, let's get you out of that and let's get you into something that's actually working. Right. Um, so I'm always going to leave that option out. If someone's get, getting into a brand new shaft or our shafts for their irons, our wedges, anything like that, right? So, like, the customization part is what I'm really all about. And then making sure it works after and they're happy with the product. They're, you know, they're going to be enjoying the golf game a lot better. So, sure. if it's and, not- and, and you offer that direct to consumer uh, support. Yeah, you know, somebody's out on a course, and I mean, I had this happen to me last year where um, my gap wedge, I hit a gap wedge, and I actually snapped the shaft inside of the grip. It must have been a weak point in the shaft, and it just literally just snapped in my hands. And we, we talk about this this personalization. It's like when I got off the course, I threw it in the bag. Uh, I had to play like 11 holes without it, but again, only a couple of shots have affected. As soon as I was done, I was I, on the way home. I texted my, my guy here and said, I need a shaft for a gap wedge. He's like, well, are you on your way home? Drop it off. I'll have it ready for you by midday tomorrow. And that was like Thursday night. And I was picking it up. I picked it up Friday afternoon when I got home from, from work. Yeah. That personal, yeah. that, that type of personalization of, a, of somebody who, who will look after your bag. Dude, that's mm-hmm. huge. That is huge. And, and that's how you are going to build your, build your business, build your brand. Is that type of personalization? It's like, dude, I uh, I need th- I need this done, and I need to get it done relatively quick. Or, can we have a look at this, right? Because this isn't working for me. Now, can we go back to square one and, and start this over, man? You know, that's, that's yeah. that personalization of, yeah. of of a club fitter builder, um, and you know the the user. Uh, it, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I mean, I. The way I got into it was uh, my uncle was the first one who showed me um, how to bend clubs. Like, I didn't understand that. And then he showed me, this is how you do that. This is how you tweak that. And I, I was hooked after that when he first showed me how to to bend my wedges. So, like, if somebody comes up and they're, like, <clears throat> curious about their lofts, like, I'll, I'll do specs on their, on their irons. Um, most times I don't charge anything for that. Even, like, so if a junior has a set of clubs... I'm not going to charge a junior anything at all. If they want something done on their, their clubs or anything like I'm juniors, I'm going to, I'm going to set them up for free. I mean, if they have, the, if they have the equipment, like I'm going to help them up as much as I can. Um, going back to like uh, the personal, 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 personalization part. It's, I wish I had this access to somebody uh, when I was getting into like the golf because like <clears throat> it took me a long time to understand the golf nerd side and then understanding um, how to incorporate into my my game. It's it's different where when you go to uh, a big brand st- store and you're like, can I get this done? A lot of times they're like, well, why? And like they they do try to accommodate what you're getting going after, right? But it's after that it's said and done you're not you you can't go back and be like oh like i need this done because you did this it's always going to be somebody else different working on your clubs there and then the turnaround time it's like because there's such a big store they got like so many customers dropping off their gear right so you're on a list you're you're basically on a little waiting list if you don't know the guy personally and then for me like if someone comes up to me after hours like that's where I do most of my work is after hours and night. I'm kind of a night owl. Um, and just working on clubs, like I love working on clubs. So like if somebody comes to me after hours, I'll, I'll do it on the spot if I got nothing going on. Um, and that's, that's, that's a cool thing about like how I wish I had that access, access to somebody. Like if they, if I needed something done on the spot, like he would say, come drop it off right now. Yeah. So 
I'm all about that quick turnaround. And, and like I said, I got into it um, mainly because like being first nation um, it's, it's, it's kind of hard walking into like the bigger stores and like, they don't look at us the same way um, <laughs> because like we have this, uh, where we have to prove. let's just say it there's a stereotype there play well we, we got to prove ourselves every time right? we walk into stores, yeah, yeah. and it's, it sucks but at the same time it's like i don't want to have a lot of people for a lot of first nation people going through that they could just come to me and I'll, I'll explain to them a lot better than what's going to be explained to them at those stores and then i'll tell them you know um exactly what i said is like if if it's not working bring it back and let's get you into something that's actually going to work uh, a, a lot of big stores won't do that for you. Like, uh, like once your seat's handed to you, then you're done. Like you just, that's yeah. yours. Right? Um, and then like, I've had a few buddies come up to me and they're like, asking me questions and they're like, well, I asked, where did you get told this? And they're like, this guy at the store. And I'm like, like when, like, I understand they're selling product, but at the same time, like, don't lie about something that where the customer is going to be able to go find out. And it just, it just looks bad on them. Right. So I, I, I try to tell a lot of customers the way it is. I'm like, I'm not going to lie to them if they're like swinging something and they want something else. I'll be like, well, let's try to get you into this because it's going to work a lot better. So that's, that's what I'm about is like trying to get the, the game more in, in, enjoy enjoyable um where you're not stress stressed out on a course because like if you have a favorite club let's work on that like let's let's get back to it same thing though play like the, the game can be intimidating for for people just getting into the game or even even people that may have been around the game for a while the game can be intimidating you know when you're going to the course and you're seeing tons of people playing and and just to be able to go and you know chat with somebody like you say you know privately or you know one-on-one -on -one, just to be able to talk about what that person wants that he might not him or her might not be able to not want to go to like a clubhouse a golf clubhouse or a, or a big brand store and talk about like they they can build that relationship with you you know and and maybe not feel as intimidated like because mm -hmm. maybe they don't know anything about you know lofts or lies or anything like that and and you can you can guide them through that and again, back to the personalization of build of some helping somebody build their set, um, you know, it takes that little bit of a little bit of anxiety away from them, right? Yep, yeah, yeah. And and <clears throat> like being able to go actually play with them too, like given that option, like um, I don't think there's much club fitters out there that will actually want to play with their customers, right? I'm not I'm not saying it's a it's a, it's a freaking good selling point, pal. I was well, like, oh, that, well, you want, you want, I want to see what you're doing. Well, let's go play. Let's go play 18. And, you know, I'm up for that all the time. Well, let's go freaking play 18. Then and I'll, you can see what I'm doing here. And then you can give me the recommendations. That's, that's over the top. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So like I, I've <clears throat> a lot of, a lot of players that I've helped out that um, are basically friends of past uh, friends that I've learned, like just are good golfers. And then like just seeing them play, I wouldn't say the wrong equipment, but just things that I think could be a lot better. Um, Again, the better, the better, the more level, the higher level you go in the game, I guess, the more tight you need your your gear to be, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, most, I think, most stock clubs that come off the rack, if you're if you're in competitive golf, um, it's it's hard to to say. Oh, this club's gonna work for you straight off the rack. It's like if you're, because everybody's swing is different, right? If you're swinging, and like, say like a extra stiff, but you need to get into a stiff, and and it's 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 the ego part where like, oh, I can swing this. It's just like, like I said, sixteen holes is your sixteen holes in is your swing gonna be the same? Most most times it's not, right? Because the, like it, it's just not there. Um, so trying to explain that to like a lot of customers that come in or, or ask any type of questions, um, ego plays a big part, especially in men. Um, then talking them out, out of certain clubs. Like I said, I'm not going to push any, anybody into a full bag fit in. Uh, I'm not looking to get rich off of this. 
it's 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 just for for myself. I want a lot of more golfers to to enjoy the game, and then build on their clubs that they have. Like I'm not going to try push them into brand new clubs at all. Um, shafts is different because like say if they want a new shaft, like most times I'm not going to like reuse an old shaft. Uh, graphite when you when you're pulling graphite shafts, like for myself, I. I don't really trust if someone goes and pulls it because I don't know how 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 high they put the heat on that shaft, right? So I'm not going to be the one be like, "Oh, your shaft's toasted." I I I fucked it up when right. that previous guy did. So I'd rather build with brand new shafts. So like, say if somebody wants to get brand new, like I'm all for it. Um, like for myself, like my this past season, um, I got brand new woods like shafts in my woods um that was a big thing for myself because i played the, the i played my setup for a long time uh switching out my my shafts into brand new this season was a big thing and i think it helped out a lot that's the reason why like i got back into the competitive side of golf it's just like my swing is there every every swing that i have like just confidence right um and that's like what i'm really pushing into anybody that comes in, in into looking for a brand new anything i'll uh i'll offer to go play with them see where their swings at and see what they want to get into um or or just get them on a sim or a swing monitor it, it really just depends on where they want to go about it like like i said i'm not going to force anything at all um so have you looked after anybody that we know name wise uh anybody's gear um, that you're um after? Well, I, I she, she, I don't really like name dropping a lot of a lot of people that I know. Um, she's out on social media. She's a long drive hitter. Her name's Irene Crowchild. She's see, I know, I'm, I know Irene Crowchild. I know the name because yeah, I had a past guest who name dropped her as well. Yeah, she's doing she's doing well. She's um, I've played in tournaments where I've seen her swing, and she's got one of the most unique swings ever. And then just bombs it like I ain't gonna lie. She'll 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 be out like out driving me every time. Uh, I've told her I've told her that too. Like <clears throat> I don't have the swing speed she has. Um, so when I reached out to her, it's through social media. Uh, again, that's how I started. Like reaching out to anybody um, was through social media. Um, I can't remember exactly when it was like just right before golf season started and she was talking about like how because she's a lefty um how she's like it, it's kind of hard for lefties to find equipment right so um i reached out there and then i got her into uh, a house of ford shaft because that's what she was re like looking for with her long drive um stuff so she's one of the ones i helped out um there's a couple other players that are really good golfers that always like play better than me basically um name wise i i don't have like no one that i'm working on like that a lot of people know um i ain't gonna lie like the dream is to work on somebody professionally like do on for like, sure somebody, like, on it, it, again it, it kind of sits fits in the same category like that you know like for a small podcast like ours you know we, a couple couple episodes ago we had uh, pga champions play a tour player brian cooper on i mean for us that's our first pro pro dude's been on TV yeah. join us on the podcast. Like, you know, that's kind of, that's really sweet. We got there. And, and I do believe in a little while here, we're getting a guy that actually was on the bag for him uh, in a few tournaments is going to come on as well. So that's cool. us reaching that level as well. Right. And yeah, that's always a dream. If you're involved in yeah. this type of stuff, you know, getting to, and I don't say, you know, you're getting to that level or whatever, but just to have somebody, just to have somebody with that, like with those credentials, I guess, to come and, and, you know, like join us on the pod, that is like next level for us. And, and yeah, for a, for a fitter, that would be the same thing, like working on somebody's bag that, uh, that, you know, other people know in the industry. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, like I said, that'd be a dream to work on any type of professionals uh, clubs. But I, I think like the knowledge that I have, um, like I'm confident I could fix anybody's club. Right. If somebody has an issue with your club, um, even just spec wise, like I think I could help anybody that needs any type of fixing on their clubs. 
uh, reshafting, regripping, um, just anything basically building wise. Like, so <clears throat> it, it, no, is and it is that golf geek stuff too. And then, you know, just from our short conversations we've had the last little while, I do know you're the golf geek and the golf nerd type dude. So yeah, you kind of get, kind of get your rocks off on when you're dealing with that type of shit. I for sure. Yeah, for sure. It is. It's, 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 I always like get get a little carried away, and then I could tell when someone is lost when I'm like trying to explain <laughs> something. So I got a back pedal. I'm like, okay, like, I got a little carried yeah, away. Yeah, yeah tone it down a little bit, man. You're you're a little over my head here, right? Yeah, I get yeah, that. Yeah. So, pal, you got any? You you playing in any tournaments coming up? Well, I mean, I got the mid am mid am coming up. That's July 16th, 17th, 18th, which is a three day event uh, out at Barhead. Um, I was, I did consider like going for the Alberta Open qualifier, but I got put on a waiting list. So that one, um, once you go through that, like it just, if you don't make the qualifiers, there's, it's kind of hard to get into. I just like, <clears throat> there's a few other tournaments like that I do enter. Um, there's one out at Redwood. It's called the, it's Sutana Nation Golf Classic. So that one's a big one. Um, it, it's all, it's all, all native. It's a lot of like a lot of like the real real good players come out. Like there's um, one fella who works out at um, the uh, Speargrass. Yeah, Mitch Fox. Mitch Fox. Do you know who that is? Yeah, I've heard that name. You bet. He is a shooter. He's a really good player. I've watched him. Um, there's a couple more players that I've watched that come out. They're always winning and like they're. When you watch that type of level of golf, it's it's <clears throat> it's it's truly next level golf. So like, just playing alongside those type of players is um, for myself. It's it's something I wish I could get to, but like I don't think my body's gonna let me right because like I have I have uh, health issues where I got stuff with going on with my back. I don't really tell a lot of people about it, but like. That's the reason why I can't. I don't think I could hit that far. Is the reason, like the issues I have with my back. But other than that, like the competitive side is um, is what really drives me into golf, because like having that that kind of pressure um, is basically it, it, it's a privilege, right? It's I I play golf for a lot of like a lot of times the people that I think of that can't golf. A lot of the friends that I've um brought me into golf that stop golf and or health wise they can't golf anymore i'm just like well i'm gonna play for these guys like it's something that they taught me so i'm gonna continue like building on it right and then <clears throat> getting into the club fit fitting side like i said it was just just this past winter where i was like let's to myself i was like let's do it man fuck it yeah right um, it was a big step but like i I burnt myself out riding a lot of things uh, because I like I'm I'm not educated. I didn't finish my grade twelve. I dropped out of school, ran away from home, did a little bit of crazy stuff, got into like crazy situations where I'm happy I I'm where I'm at right now because I could I fairly very well couldn't be here just with the way I was going at a young age. Um. But yeah, the competitive side of golf is where it really got keeps dragging me back in. So like playing in in the uh, mid amateur is something that I'm looking forward to. Um, I I got time off from work. My boss is really pushing. Like he, he's really encouraging me for that. So That's it's good. it's awesome. Like the uh, the support that I got from my crew at work. It's it's pretty cool. Like I don't. I'm not used to that. I'll be true about that. It's just like to have people um, behind me and say like, "Oh, you could do this. You could do that." I'm not. I'm truly not used to that. Uh, a lot of times, I do things on my it's own. Me. Um, and my wife tells me a lot of times too. She's like, uh, "You can't do things on your own all the damn time." Like, um, but I'm. That's just the way I built. It's it's it just comes from my younger years where I had to survive. Um, just going on to the golf, the golf part, getting into the industry was for myself. It was like it was super. 
how would I say like brand new to, to me because like um I didn't think I was gonna be welcome and reaching out to a lot of companies a few of them welcomed me a few of them were like come back when you actually have a store basically yeah right <laughs> so, yeah, yeah so I was just like okay well I'm not gonna really mess with those companies the companies that are on board with me the companies that have been supplying me with with gear uh, and equipment it's just like I'm gonna be pushing that stuff as far as like I can right um so like, sure a little bit of faith in you goes a long way right well yeah for sure and then like just the way I, I see the corporate side of stuff it's just like it, you just got to find the clientele the customers that will come back to you and it's just the work right the 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 equipment that you put out, the product that you put out, that, that's going to be what brings people back. It's got your name and your brand attached to it then, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And that's how you're going to build your rep is, is, yeah. is, is that personalization and dealing and making sure that your clientele is looked after you know, the best you yeah. possibly can, right? Yeah. So like any, any club that I have coming in, like if I take pride in my work, so if I'm like, I'm not going to send it out where it's half ass built and I'll be like, yo, just, Give me my money and go do your thing. Yeah. No, I'm gonna. I'm not even gonna take payment until I'm happy or the customer is happy with it, right? So, and like I said, if they're not happy with, it, bring it back and let's let's get it working to where you're happy. Oh, well, that sounds fantastic. And I, I, I'm gonna wrap this up here now. And and I appreciate you taking the time to come and chat with me. And I think somewhere down the road, maybe not too in the in too far, in the mm -hmm. distant future, we're gonna we're gonna meet in person and, and and be able to grow this relationship that we have here a little more too so i'm looking forward to that because you work at serenity and i know my partner here that's not here um he's played serenity and he's been trying to get me there for three years now so yeah. somewhere somehow now we have another reason to go there and we're going to try and get that in and we're going to try to meet face to face so i'm looking for forward. Sure, so, so serenity is is awesome like uh, that's I think that's the third course I worked at in Calgary here. Um, it's it's a thirty six hole course, and like they're 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 building a brand new clubhouse. So I encourage anybody that's looking to in, enjoy some good golf, come out there. Like it's it's I wouldn't say it's the toughest, but it's it it's a good track to play because you got you got the links side, which is the sun catcher, and then you got the dancing bowl side, which I think is the more challenging challenging side. So anytime you're around, man, I'll get you out for sure. You and Chris. Sure. And so if anybody out there is listening and is in the Calgary area and looking for a club fitter to get personal with, uh, where can they find you on Instagram? Yeah, for sure. Like that's how I've been reaching a lot of my customers is just through Instagram, word of mouth. Uh, it's called One Stab Golf. Um, I also have a website that should be popping up shortly. It's like, again, I'm working on it. It's hard. Uh, it's onestabgolf.ca. And then, like, w if you're in the Calgary area and you need any type of club work, like, I'm willing to do anything. If you got something going on, you want something brought in, um, I'll bring it in and get so you going. If you if you need something, reach out and talk to Clay and tell him, you know, Mulligans and Hackers sent you. Let's do that. Yeah, for sure, man. All right, pal. We'll take care and we'll uh, we'll hook up soon. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on, Alvin. Hey, buddy. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you mm -hmm. later. Okay.